Hello, everyone, and welcome to A Real History Short. My name is Jared Frederick. We are going to be reacting to the recently released teaser trailer for Netflix's forthcoming film, All Quiet on the Western Front. There's been a lot of talk and anticipation about this film. Uh, bit by bit, there have been black and white still photos of it that have uh, come out to uh, announce its forthcoming release. And I've heard that this is the first uh, German-speaking cinematic representation of this classic 1929 novel uh, that is often considered to be the ultimate of anti-war novels. Now, the film is directed by German filmmaker Edward Berger, uh, who has uh, quite a few credits under his belt by this point, um, although I suspect that this is going to be one of the crowning achievements of his career thus far. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer. A first time reaction for me for All Quiet on the Western Front. Very dark and ominous from the outset and it always seems like flares are ubiquitous uh, in World War I movies. Uh, so it's a, a good way to start off and to set the scene. Uh, we start off with a little bit of the book itself here by Eric Maria Remarque. That's a good quote to set the tone. And going from the material culture, I, I just at this first glance, I'd say that it's quite good. It, it looks the part. We have uh, flashbacks between combat and youth. Oh, there's a spoiler with the glasses. Oh, look at those tanks. Wow. Those are French tanks, I think. <laughs> Daniel Grohl. Wow. Whoa, those flamethrowers. Oh, wow. Pulling no punches. I have angst for dem was kommt. Oh, the, the clock ticking. We're getting 1917 vibes here right now. And I, I, part of me suspects that without the success of 1917, it's possible this film may not have come into being. It showed that there was an audience for subject matter on World War One. It's rated R. Oh, rightfully so. Alright, so I jotted down a, a few notes from what I just saw to serve as the basis for our analysis here, and I think the beginning quote is a very profound one, uh, and indeed the 1929 novel uh, starts out with that uh, at its very outset. And this was a book that was not necessarily intended to be political. It was meant to be somewhat of a, a passive observation about youth in wartime, although the book became uh, anything but. Uh, and so I think that quote really helps to set the stage. I also really liked some of the flashbacks that we saw here in the teaser trailer. Uh, because it, it, it portrays this dynamic of then and now. You see the, the youthful, blonde-haired German student who is smiling. He is optimistic about what awaits him, about what his future portends. Uh, and then in some subsequent clips, uh, clips that you see bookending that, uh, you can see that it looks like he has aged uh, 10 years. Uh, and he is completely disillusioned by what he has seen and what he has experienced and so i think that this movie much like the book itself is very much going to be a rich character study uh the the tanks that we saw here are also a, a really nice touch of authenticity and uh, i looked it up and I, I i searched around a little bit and uh those are french tanks called saint chemin tanks um, and I guess they were more so armored uh, vehicles that were 
uh, a first step in the evolution of armor uh, used in warfare. Uh, and so, uh, much like earlier cinematic representations, uh, this is a film in which the Germans are pitted against the French. Uh, just as a little reminder, uh, there was also a 1930 film adaptation uh, starring Lou Ayers, which is one of the all-time uh, black and white masterpieces, uh, if you ask me. And then there was another one starring Richard Thomas, which I believe was intended for television, that came out in 1979. Uh, and so there, we have three different films here of three different generations, uh, but this is the first one that is, in fact, in German. Uh, and so there'll be a degree of authenticity to this one that the previous ones are lacking just by virtue of the language that is being uttered. Uh, something else that I noticed too um, was a, a one or two brief appearances by the actor Daniel Brühl, uh, who I am wondering uh, if he is the, the character of Cantorak. I believe I'm, I'm saying that correct. I've never actually heard it uh, pronounced out loud before. Uh, but uh, that is the character of the schoolmaster, uh, the one who is uh, very gung-ho and optimistic and enthusiastic about the war at the outset of the book and the previous films. And he urges uh, these young men to go and fight on behalf of their fatherland. And of course, that culminates in young Paul eventually going back and confronting his teacher who told him these lies. Uh, and so... Uh, perhaps we'll get into some themes of indoctrination here in the film as well. One of the other very notable snippets that we saw here was the use of French flamethrowers. And of course, uh, World War I was the first conflict in which such weapons were used. One of the distinctive things about flamethrower operators is that they often had an infantryman accompanying him. Uh, flamethrowers often had infantry support because they were marked men. They were targets on a battlefield. And it looks like uh, that is depicted as such here in the very brief scene that we had a glimpse at. Uh, and, of course, flamethrowers were absolutely devastating. They were very much feared by soldiers on both sides. And I have no doubt that this film is going to capture that sort of intensity and dread. So as the end of the trailer here states, uh, this will be playing in select theaters. I'm going to do my utmost to go see it on a big screen. Uh, how about you? Uh, one thing that I am uh, disappointed in is uh, I, I had this, uh, this hope that possibly this film would be in black and white, uh, much like the original one was. I, I think that it would capture a certain essence of the time period and be a nice throwback to the old cinematic version. Uh, that is over 90 years old right now, uh, but perhaps I was wishing for a little bit too much. Uh, so, I'm eager to hear, what are your thoughts on this trailer for All Quiet on the Western Front? We want to hear about it in the comments section right below. And we'll also take this opportunity to plug some of our other videos and resources. If you are interested in World War I films, we encourage you to take a look at our two-part review of 1917. We also invite you to visit realhistoryfilms.com where you can find educational content and resources for uh, teachers and use in the classroom. We also have a t-shirt store with some great history swag. And if you really feel like supporting our endeavors, uh, you can do so via Patreon. We welcome you to uh, check out all of these sites, uh, look at these perks, uh, support us along the way as we aspire to continue to deliver great content to you. So, until next time, stay curious.